brief introduction to Research for Life. My name is Edith Horvath, and I am from the Research for Life communication team. And then Caroline Kervison will present the Cambridge core. So, uh, okay. so what is uh, what is Research for Life? So Research for Life is a public-private partnership of um, universities, UN agencies, and international publishers. And its uh, mission is to reduce the knowledge, knowledge gap and uh, pr uh, promote uh, productive and effective research. So Research for Life provides free or low cost access to academic and professional resources online and from up to 180 international publishers. So you will see that we have quite a lot of uh, resources, um, 120,000 uh, in total books, uh, peer-reviewed journals, and databases, and other resources. So who can use Research for Life? Two groups of countries uh, can register. Um, uh, Low-income countries have uh, free access, while middle-income countries um, uh, get uh, low-cost access to our resources. In total, uh, 125 countries are eligible. And um, so who can use Research for Life? Uh, local, not-for-profit, and public institutions like universities, research institutes, government offices, uh, NGOs, or national libraries. We have already uh, 10,000 institutions registered. So quite a lot of uh, institutions already use Research for Life. Our resources are grouped uh, into five programs. Each of them are managed, uh, is managed by a UN organization. Hinari is focusing on health, Agora on agriculture, OARA on environment, RD on innovation and technology, and GOLI is our uh, youngest program, uh, focuses or collects resources on law and social sciences. But I have to mention that we have a lot of other topics uh, uh, available, mathematics and, uh, and so on. So how you can register to Research for Life? The easiest thing or the best thing is to go to the Research for Life website, www.researchforlife.org. We have an access page here. And if you click on this, you will find under the eligibility, a list of countries which are eligible to register. And there is a step-by-step -step process how to register. So this is a guide uh, which uh, give you more information about how to register. There is a list of uh, already registered universities. It is always good to check because it's highly probable that a university near you is already registered. So you can just contact your librarian and uh, you will get access to Research for Life. And this is the registration form with all the information required. So how to uh, log into Research for Life? So the best is to go to our website and there is a login button. And once you enter your credentials, you will arrive to the entry point, basically the five portals. So for, um, I just show you how to go to, how to access Cambridge Core uh, resources. So pick any of the program. Here is the uh, goalie, the low one. There is a tab on publishers. So if you select a publisher, you will find a, a drop down or drop up menu. And you can select Cambridge University Press. And once you select, you will uh, find the uh, list of uh, journals uh, provided by Cambridge University Press. And if you just click on the, uh, click on the first one, then you will arrive uh, directly to Cambridge Core. So before, um, Caroline will present it more in detail. So before I, uh, I give the floor, I just want to mention that we have a training portal with a lot of information presentation on O4 skills or how to get started with research for life. And also there is a, a page on webinars. So you will find all the recordings there and also on the Cambridge Code portal. And finally, we have training and marketing materials. Uh, you can use our PowerPoint presentations or brochures to promote our resources to our users. So here, here are our um, channels. Please stay in touch, uh, sign up to our monthly newsletter or follow us on social media channels. If you have any questions or technical questions, you can write to the help desk or uh, 
Yeah. I think that's everything on me. So I give the floor to Kaz, to Caroline. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edith. Perfect. So fabulous. So thank you for showing us that journey from the Research for Life portal um, through to Cambridge course. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and pick up that journey. Um, let's see. Okay, and let's make sure I get the right screen because that's always a risk. <laughs> Hoping you should be able to see Cambridge Core now. So the way I would like to start is to just show you how to browse content, first of all, on Cambridge Core. So you may already have done this from the Research for Life um, website. You probably came in initially with looking at a particular journal. But you can also browse from Cambridge Core as well. Um, and I want to show you this just to show you the content that you have access to. Because this year we, we give access actually to our complete journals package. So you do actually have access to all of the titles within um, Cambridge Core, all of the journals titles. So there's 404 titles published in 2021. So if I just go to browse subjects, and of course you get here from the Research for Life portal as Edith has shown you. So we've got um, just a, a nice sort of um, hub here just to show you the different subject areas available. And we publish in all different subject areas actually. So you're really gonna be able to find something that's gonna suit you. So we have everything from classical studies, language and linguistics, um, philosophy, right through to the natural sciences. So physics, mathematics, um, nutrition and medicine. So just like to sort of show you these subject hubs. So let me pick one. Oh, I've been doing a lot of demonstrations recently. Let me pick something a bit different. Let's go with computer science today. So once you click on the subject area, you get to take into the subject hub for that particular um, topic. So here you could see all of our journals within that particular subject area. So you can just see what you've got access to. And as you scroll down, um, you then see the books below um, and at the bottom of the screen we've then got more information about the series but what's quite worth looking at actually is the blog that we have because this is a really nice way just to keep up to date with what we're publishing in particular topics so if you don't feel like you can really um, if you don't feel like you're in the mood for reading research articles um, on a particular day, you can still come and read write-ups of some of our research articles via the blog. It's just quite a nice way to keep up to date with what's happening, but without actually having to read 20 pages of an article if you don't necessarily need to. So I do recommend checking out these subjects blogs. And we've also, we're very active on social media as well. So you've generally got plugins to the different feeds um, for Twitter, for example, for computer science here. So it's just quite nice if you're interested in that particular subject. What I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna go back to the homepage. Um, I'd like to sort of simulate perhaps what might, um, your journey that might happen a little bit more if you came in from Research for Life. So I'd um, just like to um, perform a search here on our homepage. So let me think of something, well, I'm always a little bit, uh, struck for inspiration. Why don't we put, I've been reading a lot about water resources recently, so why don't we pick that? Why not? So once you conduct a search on Cambridge Core, um, you, it's, it's quite um, a lot of search results, as you might see there. We've got 92,000, which is far too many. So what you'll want to do is refine that search down a little bit. So you can do that to say only show content I have access to, for example. So that already reduces this down quite a lot um, because I'm not actually, I've not authenticated on yet. So I've got quite low access. You will also want to choose articles always if you're coming in from Research for Life because actually you have access to the journals content. So it's very important to remember to choose articles and possibly journals as well, you, you can access those. I always refine down as well by publication dates. So I really like to see stuff in the last 12 months. I quite like 
to see the most relevant information. But I'm just sort of giving you an idea of, you know, the options here. And you can refine further by subject as well. So actually, you know, we've got psychiatry, which is the number one um, result here, which, you know, might probably isn't what you'd expect. Um, I'm going to refine this down to look at life sciences. And you see that as you're searching, um, this search is building up across the top of the screen there. And if you want to read something from the search results, you just click on the PDF button here. We've got a lot of open access content as well, which of course means it's completely free for you to read too. So um, if I just click the PDF, we just see this will open in the browser for me because I'm using Google Chrome. I am very stubborn with my PDFs. I always download them and then open them up in the PDF viewer. Um, I don't like reading them in the browser, but that's how my default opens and I'm sure yours will, will work just as it does. You can see as well with the article content, I'm, I am gonna download this because I do not like having to navigate in the browser. I feel it does impact the quality a little bit. Let me just save this and then I'll open it. Great, to do a little bit more in, in the PDF reader. So you can see the quality of our articles is um, been produced to a high standard. So you're really able to zoom in on that text as much as you need to. Um, also, it's quite a nice article actually, because we've got a nice picture here. So everything's been produced at really high resolution for you. So you'll be able to use this um, any way you like. We've also um, should mention that all of our PDFs are fully searchable. So if I just bring up the search box, we can see that I'll be able to um, do a search here. So if I were looking for a particular term, I can search through the full text. So it's just making a really nice user experience for you. And there's also no intrusive DRM on our PDFs. So you can save this to your desktop as I just did. So you can save it for later reading if you want. I'm a really big fan of just saving PDFs because I like to have a little library for later on when I'm sort of, if I see something interesting, often I'll just save it. And then later on, if I need to, if I need to use that in my research, I'll just think, oh, where did I see that? And I like to have it saved on my desktop there and, and categorized correctly. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, we also have the HTML version as well. Now we do find that most people prefer the PDF, um, but the HTML is there as a different format if you want to read online and you can save the PDF from the HTML. And we've also got this feature called Cambridge Core Share, which might be of interest to you. Now, if you see the share button at any point, this means that you can share a version of this article with someone who perhaps doesn't have free access. So if you think something would be of interest to a colleague and they, for whatever reason, don't have free access, they might not be in a Research for Life country, you can click this share link if you see it and you can share to social media, um, you can share to Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, or just copy into an email. It creates a link which means anyone who clicks that link can access the content. So it means that your, your colleagues in, in other um, parts of the world would be able to actually read, this, read anything that you've shared via this link. What I really like about the HTML as well, I'd like to just point out, is um, that anywhere you see a reference in the text, so any little link like this, you can click it and you go down to where the reference is um, in the particular uh, list of references. And then you can also click this little arrow and you go back up into the text to where you are. I think that's pretty neat. I really like that. So worth remembering. But I also am not a big fan of reading the HTML version, actually. I would be more likely myself to, to get the PDF, but if you like the HTML, that is also available for you. What I'd like to do is just show you one or two things. Um, I'd like to show you about exporting citations and um, also then I'm gonna show you how to make an account so we can look at things like bookmarking content. Now, first of all, exporting citations, you can do that anywhere you see the export citations button. So we've got it here. If I wanted to, so I can just click that and do it. If I wanted to export more than one at a time, I can just use these checkboxes 
to select the articles I'd like to export the citations for. And then I come down the screen and I've got the export citations button there. You'll see there's also other calls to action. You can download those PDFs. You can send them to your Kindle or your Dropbox or your Google Drive. Um, I'm just going to export citations just to show you what that looks like. So we've got our three citations here. Now these are currently in Chicago style. So what I can do is I can use this button to change the citation format. So this is a pretty neat feature actually. So I could then go and search for a different citation style. So in this case, American Psychological Association. And my citations are now formatted in that style. So this is really nice if your researchers or if you have to have a certain citation format for a, a piece of work you're doing, you can search that format here. I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a really sort of love things that are quick and easy. So I would tend to copy that to clipboard and then paste that into a notepad, which I probably am putting all my citations in. Um, if you're a little bit fancier, you can download this straight to its own notepad or Word document, or you can export it to um, a citation tool like RefWorks or EasyBib. So there's quite a lot of options there for you. And then I'm just going to dismiss that with the cross here. Let me just show you how to make an account because I'd like to show you how to use some of the features on Cambridge Core. So I'm going to show you how to use um, some of the signing up for content alerts and bookmarking content. And then I'll just show you a journal's homepage because when you come in from the Research for Life Hub, it's likely that you will land on a journal homepage. So I'd like to show you all of the features of a particular journal. So just first of all, really important to mention, you don't need to register to access the content. So if you just wanna read content, there is no need to register um, because you've got access via Research for Life. So registering just gives you a few extra features. So it's entirely up to you if you'd like to. If you want to, you click this register button here. And then we just need to fill out a few details. It's not too onerous. Um, so just title, um, first name and last name. You can choose your country from the country uh, selector over here. So if you just start typing the name of your country, um, let me think of a good example. I'm gonna go for Zambia. It will find the, the country from the dropdown once you start typing. You can also search for your organization. So if I just type Lusaka in, you can see we've got University of Lusaka. If your organization is not here though, that's okay. You can just start typing it and just have that as free text. That's absolutely fine. You just need to input your password. So this just seems to be eight characters long and a mix of um, uppercase, lowercase, and have at least one number and one letter. Um, and then confirm your password. And finally, just click to accept our terms and conditions. If you would like to stay up to date with our marketing, you may tick this box to opt in. Just to make it really clear, you are automatically opted out. So no worries if you, unless you tick, tick that box, you will be um, left well alone when it comes to marketing. But if you would like to stay up to date, to feel free to tick that. And then just click register. Now I hope you guessed already that I am actually registered already, of course. So I'm gonna click cancel on that. No need to register again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log in up here on the top right. And then just a few more button clicks. We're going further down the rabbit hole. So my credentials are already saved. There we go. So now I'm logged in. So now we can actually see I am affiliated um, with a couple of organizations. So I've got my organizational affiliation up there. But now what I can do actually is I can do a few uh, more things. And um, so one of those things is I can bookmark content. So if I'm on my search page um, and I'm looking at um, my results, what I could do is I could just click for articles. 
And then I could click on a couple of different articles that I'm interested in. So if I just select two here, and then on the left, I can actually save to my bookmarks. So just remember that we did that because I'm going to show you where those went in a little bit. We can click here and go straight through to them, but that's a little bit like a shortcut. I would prefer to sort of take you the long way around in a little bit. So we've bookmarked a bit of content. Also worth me mentioning, I think, when you see the green tick, it means you can access, but when you see the get access button, this means that actually you haven't currently got access. So do bear that in mind when you're navigating. And this is a great way to refine, to only show content you have access to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this Cambridge Core logo and I'm gonna come back to the front page. And I'm going to go to a journal homepage. So this is my favorite journal, Oryx. So I'm just gonna search for this one. So this is very likely when you search from the Research for Life platform, that you will arrive here on a journal homepage. So here's a couple of things I can do. So everywhere you see the bell, that means that you can sign up for journal alerts. So if I click to add that alert, again, just like with the bookmarks, I could click this shortcut to go through to it, but I'm not going to, because I'd like to show you how to get there from your account. But let's just remember I've, I've signed up for the alerts for now for Oryx. I can also bookmark this journal if I want. So you can bookmark articles and you can bookmark journals. So let's have a bookmark there. And again, we're just going to remember we've done that for now and not take the shortcut there. We'll have a look at where those sit in a little bit. So when you're on the journal homepage, you might find quite a few things that will interest you. So first of all, we're a very big society publisher. So about 60% of our journals are published for learned societies. And this is one of them. So we've published this on behalf of Fauna and Fora International. So you have a link out to the society there. So if you're interested in the journal, you might like to go and read up on what the society is doing. It's a great um, website they have. They're doing a lot of good work in, in conservation. As we scroll down, we've got um, quite a lot of useful information about the journal. So we've got the latest articles here we have the impact factor on the right usually in this gray box as well so that's worth having a look at and what i really like about core is we also tell people what category this particular journal sits in so that's really nice for putting this journal in context because it can be tricky to compare impact factors to each other sometimes because they vary across subjects so this sort of tells you okay this is 80 out of 168 in ecology for example we love to blog. So Oryx, this journal has its own blog. So you've got that further down the page. So again, you might be interested in reading some of these blog write-ups because they're really nice and digestible. If you're on your lunch break and you really don't want to read a whole research article, you can stay up to date by reading the blog. We've also got links to our most read and most cited articles, which are quite useful. And then we've got links to our Oryx Twitter and Facebook. So they're very act this journal is very active on social media. And again, you could link out if you are so inclined and um, go, and, go and look at those social media um, links because this might be a good way to stay up to date with you know, what's happening with the journal. It's all a nice way to just kind of receive alerts. So you don't have to come to the journal homepage every time. And of course, the best way is to sign up for those journal alerts. So let's have a quick look because I'd like to show you how to actually read the content because all this stuff is lovely, the social media, the blogging, um, but we're probably here for the actual content of the journal. So let's not forget about that. Let's go to all issues. And so down here we have all of the content laid out. So we have um, uh, content laid out on a volume by volume basis. And these sort of gray bands are 10 years worth at a time. So we've got the 2010s here. So you see you've got everything from 2010 right up to 2019. And then we have the 2020s. So we have 10 years worth of content. Green tick means you can access. And if you expand a particular volume, you'll see the issues within that. So Oryx pretty much consistently publishes um, four times a year. 
Uh, so you'll probably no surprises to see we've got four issues in every volume for the past few years. What I'm going to do is the latest issue is issue two here of volume 55. You can get to that this way, or you can just click the latest issue over here. And there we go, volume 55, issue two. Now, I want to show you this because there's a couple of interesting things to look at. Firstly, if you want to read the entire issue, you can download all of the content um, on a page. So we have two different pages of content here. So I can get the whole of page one and then I can move across to get the whole of page two. And the way I do this is a nice little trick. So all you've got to do, come down the page a little bit. You remember on the search results, we had these actions for selected content. So it's very similar here. You can click to select all, and then you can click to download PDF. And this gives you an entire page worth of content in one go. The reason we restrict that to a page by page basis is because it really helps keep the speed of core running very fast. So I've demonstrated this platform in the past in, in countries with really low bandwidth. Um, I've been demonstrating a lot in Africa. Um, you know, Kenya, the bandwidth is pretty good, but we went out to rural Kenya, right in the north of the country, and we're demonstrating there, which was just lovely, and also in Ghana. Um, and Cambridge Core was very stable and ran very quickly, I'm very pleased to say, no matter where we were. So even when we have the opportunity to go out to meet our lovely Research for Life um, partners, uh, we're very proud that we managed to produce something which will work for everybody. So I'm just going to show these in a folder because what I'd like to show you now, so we've got all of the articles that come in this zip folder. What's really nice about this is that the file names of all of the PDFs are the title of the article. And this is well worth pointing out if you are a librarian and you want to sort of show this to your academics because it's such a pain when you download a research article and your file name is just a string of gibberish. So we've given all of these file names a really sensible um, name. So the researchers will know exactly what they're looking at before they access. That's a very popular move. Um, people really like that. So I'll close this folder because we probably don't want to read 20 research articles right now, but um, all of these are of the same standard that we saw earlier. Nice, high quality um, graphics, good quality text rendering. So hopefully that will be sufficient for you. Um, what I would quite like to show you now, if we just pop over to page two, Um, you may have seen, you may have noticed this sort of uh, donut um, around uh, occasionally. So this is called an altmetric batch. So this is a really nice way of determining if an article is causing a lot of conversation. So this one is quite a nice one. What you're looking for is a higher score. So 78, that's a pretty big score um, and lots of colors. So the score is a, a measure of how many times this article has been shared to social media, whether someone has written a blog article about it, if it's been picked up by a news source, that's very good as well. Um, and the colours are showing you all the different places that have picked this up. So if we just click on this particular donut. First of all, what we can see on the landing page is where people are talking about this article. Now, this article is related to conflict between farmers and large, um, larger mammals in Chile. So no surprise that the biggest amount of engagement is from Chile. However, what's really nice is you can see what news articles have picked this up, what people are blogging about and what people are saying on Twitter. So if you click on news, it sort of shows you here like the conversation. That's quite a nice science blog, actually. So if I saw that, I think to myself, oh, this is quite a legitimate source. So this article is getting a lot of attention. And this tells me that this article, if I were interested in, in the sort of topic this is about, this could be quite an impactful article. So maybe I should read it because this might contribute to my own research. So it's a really nice way. I mean, there are no absolute catch-alls in life, um, but this is a really nice way of helping you 
just to identify stuff that could be a little bit more interesting to read. So let's come back to the um, Oryx page. Now, remember we added an alert and we bookmarked some content and I promised to show you where all that goes. So let's go and look at that. So if I go up here on the top right to my account, So what I can do is go onto the My Account menu. And what I've got here is a few different options. So first of all, I've got My Alerts. So this will show you that bell icon I clicked. This will show you the content alerts. And now we have Oryx, which I just signed up for. So I can adjust that alerts frequency. So it goes in a weekly by default. If I just wanted it monthly, I could change that. Or I can change it to be daily. And then I can actually remove that. If I'm tired of receiving that alert, I can click and I can remove that. I also bookmarked a bit of content. So that goes here under my bookmarks. So we've got the journal that I bookmarked, if you recall. So what I'm going to do, that's today's date, of course. I'm going to just remove that one. Um, and then we've got a few things on that water researches, uh, sorry, water resources search I did um, from today. So we've got those two articles. So what I can do is a couple of things. I could export the citation. I could actually click on it and then just go to it. So if we click on this, I actually get taken through to the article. And then I can read it from there. So this one's saying get access. So it doesn't, it currently um, believes I don't actually have access. And if I click that, I come up with my options. So I could, you know, purchase the article, you won't have to do that, of course. So you could um, check with uh, Research for Life or you may need to come back through the Research for Life portal. But it will soon tell you if you don't have access, but look out for that, get access. I'd really like to show you as well. Um, so we do have all this stuff I've covered today. We do actually have some training videos on this and we've made these in a variety of different languages. So if you go to contact and help at the bottom, and then if you go to training, we have um, some user guides. So we have them available in English, of course. Um, so we have all the things we've looked at, registering for an account, conducting a search, signing up for journal alerts, exporting a citation and alt metrics. We also created these in um, several different languages. So I think the most relevant ones to our Research for Life participants are going to be, we have them available in Spanish and we have them available as well in um, French. So I think maybe there's quite a few countries in our Research for Life circle that are French speaking. And we have them available in um, possibly Portuguese will be of interest to some people. I think there may be some Research for Life countries, but we have quite a few. So do feel free to check, um, just check down here in case you would like to read that in your, in your um, local language. We also do quite a lot of product, webinar, uh, product webinars as well. And if any of our Research for Life partners are account administrators, we do run that. So do feel free to come and register if you were interested in any of our product webinars. Um, just to learn more about the product, because of course we're always happy to do these special presentations for our friends at Research for Life. Um, but we have general products webinars running as well. So we've got a account administrators Cambridge Core webinar coming up um, in, in March, if you're an account administrator that's worth looking at. Well, you've probably had me talking at you for quite long enough. So um, I'll, I'll stop talking there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop the recording and then we'll look at the Q&A because uh, we do like to stop the recording before we do the Q&A, just in case some people are a little bit, um, don't want to ask questions while the recording's happening.